It's Pro Bike Time, and here we have David McNamee's Cervelo P5 Disc. Cervelo P5 Disc is a brand new bike released just in March of this year. So this is actually our first up close and detailed look at this bike. Now it's been actually seven years since the release of the P5 and Cervelo have completely overhauled its design, obviously most notably with the hydraulic disc brakes, but they've also made a number of other changes which we'll go through in more detail later in this video. Uh, they've improved the stiffness in the front end by 22%, 26% increased stiffness in the bottom bracket, and they've also improved the lightness of this frame by 18% and in fact they've actually saved 350 grams in the frame set alone on its previous model. Now Dave is actually riding this in a 54 centimeter frame and he's kind of going to be joining us later on in this video to talk through some of the race day specifics for him for this race here at the championship in Slovakia. But first of all let's take a close look at the front end because it is really something quite special. Now amazingly, Cervelo have managed to make this bike faster, all whilst complying with UCI regulations. Now they've done that by changing a whole lot of stuff up the front end in particular. We've got hidden cables, brakes hidden, all sorts. But the most notable difference of them all is this riser bar, because it is just a single riser bar coming up from the base bar. It's exactly the same, well very similar to the P3X and the P5X. All you need is a single Allen key, loosen a bolt, and you can change that riser height and therefore your aero bar height. Now, Cervelo also give you the option of different attachments to the top of that riser. Uh, Dave has opted for one very similar to the P5X, so you can actually change the tilt of the aero bars. But it's this bit coming off the front of the aero bars that starts to get really quite interesting because the bars here, the speed bar, are not proprietary components to the Cervelo bike. Well, these are custom molded to Dave's arms, so he gets a really nice, comfortable fit and also very aerodynamic. He was actually one of the first, if not the first triathletes to get these bars made. I think the likes of Lucy Charles Barkley and Tim Don and a couple of others have also followed in suit. Uh, you may have also noticed these in the hour record attempt on the track. Uh, but yeah, if you wanted to set these bars yourself, it would cost you somewhere in the region of three to three and a half thousand euros or pounds. Quite a lot, but custom for you. Uh, between that, we also have the X-Lab mini attachment, and then on the top of that, we've got the X-Lab Gorilla bottle cage, which is a really nice, tight-fitting bottle cage so you don't get any bottle rockets. And then on the front of that, we've got a nice Garmin mount. We're well, moving back down onto the base bar, and we've got a really nice ergonomic rubberized grip here, which is really nice and comfy and really flush with the base bar. And then obviously this bike is fully kitted out with Shimano Dura-Ace Di2. So we've got the levers here, gears, shifters on the base bar, and obviously also on the aero bars. But now let's move on and take a look at the crank set. And you may have already noticed that he has a rather white chain on, and that's because David is a Ceramic Speed ambassador. So he's got his race ready Ceramic Speed chain on, and with that, obviously, has Ceramic Speed bottom bracket bearings and probably elsewhere on the bike. Uh, he also has the Ceramic Speed OSPW jockey wheel attached to his Durace Di2 rear mech. Um, and if you're not already aware of what the OSPW jockey wheels do. Now, the idea is they actually smoothens out the chain flow through the jockey wheels and therefore reducing the friction. And above that, he's actually got an 1130 cassette, so quite a wide range for a relatively flat course out here in Samarin. Well, onto the wheels, and another sponsor of Davis is DT Swiss. So on the front, he's got the DT Swiss Arc 1100 die cut wheel, um, and then on the rear, he has a DT Swiss disc wheel, which I'm sure a lot of you out there will know that DT Swiss don't actually sell a disc wheel. So I'll let you speculate on where that one comes from. But given that DT Swiss actually provide bearings to a number of other wheel manufacturers, I suspect it's probably come from one of those. In terms of tires he's using, he's got the Vittoria Corsa Speed tires on both the front and the rear. And he's running them in tubeless um, and he's got 23mm on the front and 25mm on the rear. 
Now we were really fortunate recently to join Dave McNamee on the velodrome for some aero testing in Derby. And he did that on the P5X and he's actually tried to replicate that position as best as possible onto the P5 disc. But one thing that he did allude to during that video was his difficulties and issues he's been having with saddles. He just can't find one that works for him. So actually the day after filming with him, he went off to meet Phil Burt, who is a bit of a bike guru. He's done loads of work for British Cycling. And they've decided upon the ISM PN 2.1, which he is now riding on this bike. But quite funnily, he's actually got a demo saddle here, which is not something you see on too many pro bikes. So I'm sure he'll be changing it at a later date. He's also opted to put a cable tie around the front of the rails, which is something I used to do myself. It just helps to bring the nose together slightly to get a little bit more comfortable. And then on the back of the seat post is something Savello have done really nicely. It's actually an attachment that you can then change the angle of for rear hydration. Dave's actually gonna remove this for race day. He's decided he doesn't need it, but at the moment he's got the X-Lab Gorilla XT bottle cage, which is very similar to the front one. It's a really tight cage and it just stops those bottle rockets. Well, now on to some of the final bits and pieces. We've got a nice Cervelo aero bottle on the down tube here, which is really sleek in design and nice and flush with that down tube. Dave's actually using this for just storing gels in on race day here in Samarin. On the top tube, we've got another nice rubber bento box. Again, that could be used for storing gels in. And in front of that, we've got another little rubber attachment, and that is currently storing the DI2 junction box in. But as you remember from earlier, I mentioned that you can get different riser attachments for the aero bars here. Ordinarily, if we were looking at a UCI legal bike, it's very likely that that DI2 junction box would be stored in that riser attachment. But because Dave has opted for the P5X attachment so he can adjust the angle of them, he's had to store the DI2 junction box here, but still a really nice, sleek design. But now I think it's time we got Dave in to hear his thoughts on the bike. All right, Dave, I'm excited to get your thoughts on this bike. So how is it? Yeah, for me, it's, yeah, it's incredible. You know, I've been in the P5X for the last two years, loved the bike, was convinced that I'd be on the P5X for the rest of my life. But yeah, I jumped in this bike sort of six, seven weeks ago and sort of fell in love. And yeah, for the time being, over 70.3 distance especially, this is, yeah, my bike of choice. So you rode this quite recently in Barcelona, I'm a 70.3 there. Yeah, and obviously incredible bike, and the Barcelona bike course is very hilly, which... Well, I was about to ask about that, because obviously this is a bit lighter than the P5X, yeah. so I'm guessing that was partly the reason for choosing that. Do you know the weight of it? I'm, I'm going to, I'll say lighter than the P5X. <laughs> I'll, I'll go for 8.3 kilograms. All right, well, I've got, I've got, some, no idea, I've got some tools we'll go here it. that I'm dying to use, so this is here fancy. we go. All right, so check that's on. Yeah, all right, here we go. P5 disc, Dave McNamee's rig. We've got nine point, can you read that for me, Dave? Ooh. What have we got? 9.9. Oof. Oof. Well, pretty good. I no, think it's, it's, it's got the water bottle. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's probably mostly down to this front end that you've got. So talk me through this, because that's quite special. Yeah, so it's completely custom. It's from Speedbar, which is a company based in Holland. Uh, you get basically, you know, when you break your arm, you get like an arm cast. Yeah. So he comes and molds an arm cast as if you'd broken your arm, takes the arm casts away, and then, yeah, four or five weeks later, these appeared, and yeah. And now everyone's copying you. Yeah, I was going to say, this guy, Sebastian Keenley, apparently, is <laughs> copying me, and then, yeah, you've got the other British people, like Tim Don, Lucy Charles is on them, and yeah, I can see why. It's, yeah, it's a great device. Brilliant, okay, and finally, um, obviously we are here just a couple of days before the race in uh, Slovakia. Are you changing anything for race day? Mm, I might decide, you know, I might need some water bottles, but that's about it. Okay, cool, and tire pressure? Uh, I think it will, I'll need to check out the road surface, so I'll go for a bike ride tomorrow, but it'll be in the range of 110 to 120. Okay, very interesting. Now, finally, let's have a look at your race suit. Yeah, this is my race suit for Sunday. It's the Hub Animoy. And yeah, I've been using it for the last 12 months. And, you know, obviously I've had some success in the time. Yeah, well, it's quite an interesting suit. I never realised it had this trip seam on the front of the leg here. Yeah, so we've got the trip line here. And again, I test once or twice a year with Hub in the Velodrome and Derby. And this was one of the things that we brought in last year. I 
can't honestly say I know much about aerodynamics, but I trust you, but I trust the people that work for them in aerodynamics. And yeah, the numbers tell me it's faster. So yeah, it's a great sort of new thing. Fantastic. And are you going to be racing that same suit for the rest of the year? Uh, I think we may have something special coming for Hawaii, but I think, you know, we'll wait and see. Well, that's been absolutely fantastic. Thanks ever so much for, well, loaning us your bike today, Dave, and also joining us for the video. It's been really cool. If you guys liked this video and this bike as much as I did, then please do hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more from GTN, click on the globe and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to see a video of me at the Velodrome recently, then click here.